I've told you guys many times, there's not five people walking this planet that understand the business of MMA. Not five. Five is, is, a, is a tremendously generous number. I say five just so there's no exaggeration and there's no way that I'm wrong. And you would not believe how many executives in MMA, people that have spent 20 years at the highest levels, do not understand what it is we're doing here. They do not understand the psychology of the fan, of the consumer, of the sponsor. They do not know what it takes to build anticipation. They don't even know that the key to the industry, if you're talking about monetization, has to be that very word, anticipation. It cannot be excitement. It can't be greatness. It can't be spectacle. It can't be athletic. It can't be sport. It can't be anything that you can see on the internet after it's concluded. It has to be a feeling that comes prior to make you buy the ticket, pick up the t-shirt, host the party, attend the party, push the buy button. It has to be ahead of time. And when I tell you executive been in here 20 years that do not understand what is going on, I watch and observe that with professional wrestlers. There's something called the shoot interview. And a shoot interview came out to be the definition and the word that's going to be used when the wrestler is going to drop the act and just level with you. That was called a shoot. Now, the rest of the time was called a work. It's where the person was in character. It's where Hulk Hogan is not coming out as Terry Bullia. He is coming out as Hulk Hogan. He's wearing the red and the yellow, brother. And over a very short period of time, I mean, like, record period of time, the shoot became the new work, and you never knew when they were telling the truth. But every now and then, you can see through the curtain, and it would be an amazing thing for me to watch a wrestler, even a second-generation guy, whose pops was in the business, whose uncle was in the business, sometimes third-generation guys, whose grandfather was in the business and their dad was in the business. And they do not understand when a person's working and when a person is shooting or when they, for their own character, should blur the lines as opposed to come at you straight. It's just a fascinating thing for me. And I watched an interview with Ronda Rousey, and it was just so, it was so awesome. It was so awesome to see a person who, who they themselves was a benefactor and then left the competitive sports world to go into the entertainment sports world, came out the other side and still doesn't understand. And there's no part of that that is an insult. I, I share with you that genuinely fascinates me. Genuinely. How you could make it to the top of the bill of a WrestleMania, it's just, it fascinates me. And Rhonda largely was talking about that she had her feelings hurt by people in the MMA media that she thought were friends and they were so quick to dance on her grave when she got beat and that there are a bunch of a-holes and they don't like her and she's glad that she had that experience so she could at least see who her true friends were and it was just an amazing concept because i'm I'm so curious what the other side of the coin would be. Like if, if you were, in this case, we're, we're talking Rhonda, it could be anybody though. But if, if you were Rhonda's friend and you had a job to do in the MMA media and Rhonda lost, what do you do then? How, how do you marry those two together? How do you remain her friend and write and or cover the topic where she lost? Do you, do you mind if Rhonda got beaten up as long as she beat up the other person worse? Do you, like, for example, is it outcome or performance-based? I'm, I'm just wondering, as the friend, 
Are you hoping for her safety? Well, you didn't get it. She got the help kicked out of her. Oh no, that's terrible. Well, wait a minute, I didn't finish the story. She beat the hell out of the other person even worse. Oh, that's great. And that I would be confused by. Or Rhonda had her dreams dashed. As opposed to she destroyed her opponent's dreams. It's a very peculiar situation. I'm not sure why you couldn't cover Rhonda, say what happened, which would include if she was to be beaten. If she was to be beaten, I think you could still be her friend, but write down and or report how she was beaten. If she was outstruck, by example, if you were to comment on either her offense or her defense or lack thereof, I don't think that would stop you from maintain your friendship. I don't see how one would have anything to do with the other. And I think it was very genuine. I think it caught her off guard. I think it hurt her feelings. I think that that's pretty tough stuff. It also surprises me where even to this day, she doesn't understand what the MMA media's problem is with her. The fact that she doesn't understand that to this day does surprise me. I mean, I, I got to tell you, in all fairness, it does surprise me. Guys, let's say we have a relationship, okay? And this is an extreme example, but it's an example I'm going to use because I know it's one that you will understand. I am the DA. You kill somebody. You committed a murder in my jurisdiction. Now, I have knowledge that you did it, but we're friends. So I am not going to press charges. Okay, great. Well, I now need to step down as the DA. If I'm not able to do my job and have a friendship, I've got to step down. So you see where, regardless of your relationship with an athlete, in this case, Ron, but any athlete, where if you could not cover them, if you could not go out and say what you saw and report what happened, it's, it's, it's a very interesting proposition to then believe that that carries over to a personal level, that somehow you were disingenuous, insincere. It really does surprise me. And there are times where an athlete is going to need the media. I mean, you're, you're, no example would be greater than that of Brock Lesnar right now. Brock Lesnar has been canceled for allegedly sending message to a person who he is to this day never met, never to anyone's knowledge even seen face to face. It's, it's an amazing thing. I mean, that would be very simple to come out and argue against. Like, I don't need to tell you what was said or what was in a text. I would not even need to tell you. If you know for sure that there was no claim that he was even in the same room as said person, like, let, let's just stop right there. Brock would be free and clear. They could even work it into an angle and put him television on Monday nights. But Brock, in his entire career, made a grand total of zero friends in the media. So nobody in the media has come out to defend him. Nobody. Regardless of how blatantly obvious it is that the treatment towards him is a right. Do you, do you understand these things? Do you understand where this is the push and a pull? Do you understand where there's not like some great integrity or standard put on MMA media.com being ran from the dude's house with his pajamas? Like, do you understand that? Do you understand where if you didn't return calls and you didn't return relationships that you cannot expect somebody to just be waiting there for you? It's, it's, a, it's a very basic concept. And I would tell you, I've been surprised. I've been surprised to watch it because I always make the assumption and I have been wrong more times than not. I make the assumption that the greats, they were able to fill a house, command pay-per-views, move the t-shirts, all due to a psychology. I have always imagined that they had the greater understanding. And there's times that when the story is done, completely done, even when they finally realize, when they finally wake up and smell the roses, they still have it wrong. They still haven't put their finger on why. And it's just a very incredible thing. And when you're out there, the only thing that's real is the money and the miles. 
There is no relationships. There is no friends from nine to five. There's a business and it's as cold and hard as any other business.